What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris from fstoppers.com and today I'm going to be comparing the iPhone 7 Plus camera to a DSLR. For years now, we've been hearing that the camera inside your cell phone is capable of replacing a professional level DSLR. Even at the iPhone 7 Plus release, Apple said that this camera had DSLR quality. I'm a little sick of hearing that, and so I was, I was just complaining to Patrick and saying, you know, I'm sick of all of these camera manufacturers saying that they have DSLR quality when it's not even close to DSLR quality. Patrick actually argued with me and said, you know, the iPhone 7 camera probably is pretty close to at least an older DSLR at this point. And I said, no way, you're never gonna get the sharpness, you're never gonna get the ISO performance, you're never gonna get the versatility. And so he said, well, you know what, set up a test. So that's what we're doing today. We have seven little tests that we're gonna put each of these cameras through and see which camera actually is best in each category. Now, let's talk about the camera that we will be comparing the iPhone 7 Plus to. This is the Nikon D300S. This is a much older DSLR. It's about seven years old at this point, but we chose this camera because it's relatively cheap, especially if you buy it used online and it's 12 megapixels, so it's the exact same megapixels as the camera on the iPhone 7 Plus. Now, you might be arguing, Lee, oh my gosh, this isn't a professional camera anymore, it's so old and the technology's so old. Yes, that is true, but I made a lot of money with this camera. This was my main camera for probably four years. We filmed every single F-Stoppers original video for like two years on this camera, and I shot every single wedding for three or four years on this camera. So don't tell me this isn't a professional camera. Obviously, you could spend five grand and get a much nicer camera today, but if we're talking about a fair comparison here, this camera and lens cost about four or 500 bucks. This phone costs about $1,000, but you have to keep in mind this is a smartphone. It can do so much more than just take pictures. So for the first test, it's just about image quality in ideal lighting situations. So what I did is I stepped outside, I took a picture of some houses with both cameras and then transferred the files to the computer to take a look at them. I was shocked at how well the iPhone 7 Plus did. I, I, I was just so sure that the DSLR was going to absolutely destroy it. Even though the megapixels are the exact same, I knew that the lens was going to be better and the sensor was going to be better. But man, you really have to zoom in all the way to 100% to see a significant difference. And if you look hard in the shadows, you can see a lot more noise in the iPhone 7 Plus, but man, it is an incredible looking shot if you have an ideal amount of light. Now, one of the main reasons somebody's going to buy a DSLR over a point and shoot camera is because it's so freaking fast. You know, you can just hold the button down and snap pictures away. You're not gonna miss a thing. However, there is a burst mode on the iPhone 7 Plus as well that is actually even faster. The D300S shoots at seven frames a second, whereas the iPhone, I'm not exactly sure what the spec is, but we did the math. It seems to be around like 15 frames a second. So what I did is I, as I got on my electric skateboard and went back and forth, and you can see here with the D300S, we got about seven shots. But with the iPhone, we got 16 different frames as I whiz by. However, you will notice that with the DSLR, we were able to change the settings manually to get crisp, sharp images, whereas with the iPhone and the native app, I cannot manually choose the shutter speed and aperture on my own. So therefore, the camera did not know what shutter speed to use, and I'm blurry in each shot. So although I did get more frames with the iPhone, the images were better out of the DSLR. Now, another reason that people are going to buy a DSLR over a smaller camera is because they love that shallow depth of field. The idea is that you could shoot somebody's face and then it quickly goes out of focus and you have that beautiful bokeh in the background. Now, the iPhone 7 has a portrait mode that allows you to create that shallow depth of field look using dual lenses and using some sort of computer algorithm. So let's put that to the test next. So I took the first photo of Patrick with the DSLR, and as you can see, I'm getting some really nice shallow depth of field. I then used the iPhone in portrait mode, and I took the shot. The cool thing about portrait mode with the iPhone is it takes both images, one with shallow depth of field and one as a standard mode. Now, if you look at these all the way zoomed out, I have to say I'm very impressed with the way that the iPhone 7 Plus performed. I thought that this was just going to be some sort of Snapchat filter where it just finds your face and blurs everything out. It is not like that at all. It is actually using both lenses to determine depth 
and it does a really good job of adding this fake shallow depth of field. If you look around his hair, you will notice that there's some issues, but man, it looks really good. And if you're just putting this on Facebook or Instagram, nobody is going to notice that you didn't shoot this with a DSLR. Now, one other issue that we've noticed is that the ISO performance on the longer lens, remember this camera has two lenses built in, and when you take a picture in portrait mode, it uses the longer lens, the ISO performance is much worse with the telephoto lens rather than the wide lens. And so even though it was still daytime outside, it was a little overcast, it was starting to get a bit darker, and if you zoom into these shots, you will notice that the DSLR image looks far superior to the iPhone shot. And I think that's just because we didn't have quite enough light outside to be using the telephoto lens. Now, you may be wondering about the ISO performance of the wide angle lens, and so was I. So to test both of these cameras in low light, what I did was I opened up the crawl space underneath Patrick's house, and I took some photographs of him sleeping there. To my surprise, the iPhone 7 Plus camera, when it's wide, when it's using the wide angle lens, is actually incredible. It is so much better than I thought it would be. And uh, it, it looked dark under there, but you know, as I'm taking the picture on the phone, I, I was thinking, eh, this, this looks pretty good. Obviously it's a little grainy, but it looks pretty good. Uh, I still did not think that it would beat the DSLR because obviously I have manual control over the DSLR. Now I have a 2.8 aperture lens here. So I shot this at 2.8, 1 30th of a second, ISO 3200. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but it got beat in a low light performance test with a very expensive 2.8 aperture lens to a cell phone. That is unbelievable. And I know what you're saying, but Lee, this is an older camera, and yes, of course it is, but man, the sensor in this camera is huge compared to the sensor in this iPhone. And this is a pretty expensive lens. The fact that it's a 2.8 aperture zoom lens, this is considered a pro lens, and it's still lost to this phone. I was definitely shocked with that one. Now, the next test isn't going to be fair at all because this was one of the first DSLRs ever to be able to shoot video, but I did wanna do it just for the sake of this video. And so what I did was I, I took a video clip with the Nikon D300S. This camera shoots at 720p and it's a really bad 720p. And then I took the exact same clip in 4K with the iPhone 7 Plus. There's absolutely no comparison here. The iPhone destroys the Nikon camera, and even if you wanna upgrade your camera to one of the highest end DSLRs today, very few of them are shooting 4K. So in many cases, when it comes to video, the iPhone is still shooting better video than very expensive DSLRs, including the DSLR that we're shooting on right now, the Nikon D750. Next up, let's talk about versatility. I don't think cell phones are ever going to replace the versatility of DSLRs when it comes to their lens choices. You're obviously not going to have like 200 lenses on the back of this camera that can work uh, whenever you want them to. However, there are so many other things that the iPhone can do that a DSLR can't do. It's very difficult to say that hands down the DSLR wins. And there's so many apps coming out all the time, including currently new apps that are coming out that allow you to shoot in RAW with the iPhone. It's, it's very difficult to say that one is significantly more versatile than the other right now. And as time goes on, I think cell phones are only going to get better. The final test is a durability test. And I can remember when this camera came out and what Nikon was bragging about was how durable it was. And they have weatherproofing. And if you open each one of these little gates here, there's this rubber that goes all the way around. And they were saying you could shoot a sports team outside with this while it's raining and it's not going to leak. And man, I, I thought that was the coolest thing. Now that's all well and good. However, the new iPhone 7 Plus is supposed to be completely waterproof. It's not just weatherproof, it is waterproof. So for this final test, we decided to figure out which camera actually was the most durable. I filled up a bathtub and as you can see, I put the iPhone 7 down in the water and it worked like a champ. It's kind of like magic. I can't think of many situations where I'm submerging my phone. Uh, but being able to do it and know that the phone will be totally fine is really exciting. Next, we put the Nikon D300S in the tub as well, and immediately I saw bubbles. So the weatherproofing wasn't working as well as I had hoped. Maybe it's worn down over the last few years, but it did seem to take on some water immediately, whereas the iPhone was surviving perfectly fine. 
Now, one issue that you will find with the iPhone is that as soon as the screen gets wet, you can no longer use it. So although I can change the lenses uh, when the phone is out of the water by pressing the little zoom in button, the second this phone goes under the water, the screen no longer works and I can't change the lenses anymore. However, you can change lenses under the water with the DSLR. So as you can see here, I was able to take the lens off but again, it was flooded with water and we had more bubbles. And then at that point, the, the camera, I don't know what happened, but it just didn't turn on anymore. So at this point, our camera wasn't working anymore. We had to stop all of our tests. However, I think that we came up with a decent conclusion here. In most cases, I would still say that the DSLR is superior to an iPhone. And man, it, it really should be, especially if you're looking at current DSLRs. But I have to admit the iPhone 7 Plus was leaps and bounds better than I ever expected it to be. I did, and it got really close to the quality of this DSLR in a few of the tests. And in like the ISO test and in the video test, it destroyed this camera. I, I cannot believe it. I thought that the DSLR, even though it's older, would, would easily beat a cell phone when it came to low light performance, but I was wrong. And I can just see in the next year or two or three, these cameras are going to get better and better and better. And if these DSLR manufacturers don't keep trying to push the envelope, they just keep making the same old thing, it's not going to be too long until the iPhone actually is just as good as a DSLR. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that comparison. If you'd like to learn more about photography, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you'd like to learn about the highest level of professional photography, and you'd like to learn from some of the best photographers on the planet, head over to fstoppers.com store to check out some of our premium photography tutorials.